All right, so welcome to a brief history of Agile development. This is something that we wanted to provide to give you a foundation for some of the concepts that we're going to be discussing over the progress of this course. And we'll start in the early 17th century uh, with a guy named Francis Bacon and the scientific method. Now, Francis Bacon was a real Renaissance dude. He was a parliamentarian, a lawyer, a philosopher, and an author, but he's best known for his contribution of empiricism, which heavily influenced the scientific revolution. Empiricism led to a new school of thought which enabled the replication of experiments and increased overall knowledge. It's characterized by the generation of hypotheses, of the development of predictions based on logical consequences, and then the conduct of experiments to test those predictions. The scientific method was just a framework. It wasn't a prescription for conducting scientific inquiry, and it gave us a way to integrate new knowledge into existing knowledge based on proof. So into the early 18th century we go with the Industrial Revolution. This is characterized by the application of science to the design of manufacturing processes and procedures. The Industrial Revolution is all about using the scientific method to observe cause and effect in an effort of increasing industrial efficiency. It gives us industrial engineering, which is the realization that incremental improvements lead to greater efficiency, lower costs, and higher profits. It produces a significant global increase in the standard and quality of life, uh, and has actually been called the most important event in history since the domestication of animals, plants, and fire. So into the early 20th century with the theory of scientific management by a guy named Frederick Winslow Taylor. Now if industrialism is all about the pursuit of economic efficiency, Taylor recognizes that it's really about the application of science to the study of management and workflow. There's a strong emphasis here on labor and human resources, uh, the goal being standardization of best practices. Theory of scientific management is characterized by themes of empiricism, of transfer of knowledge between workers, and elimination of waste. Now into the middle part of the 20th century we have World War II, and wartime basically impacts some, some significant constraints on domestic production and it forces manufacturers to find substitute raw materials to replace those that are being consumed by the war machine. So you have these three engineers at General Electric. They conceptualize a method of functional analysis of the production line where they find substitutes for other raw materials. They observe the impact of those substitutions on the function of the product with the goal of preserving the level of quality so that there's no degradation to the end product. Value engineering has this corollary effect of reducing costs, improving the product, and in some cases doing both. GE actually provides value engineering to the Department of Navy in 1954, and we see clauses incorporated into the FAR as early as 1984. So after World War II, America and its allies have an interest in reconstructing Japanese economy, which is basically left devastated by the war. Uh, we sit over our brightest management thinkers, led by a guy named W. Edwards Dimming. He teaches management training, fundamentally informed by Frederick Winslow Taylor's theory of scientific management and Walter Schuhart's statistical process control to Japanese manufacturers. They apply these theories and are able to propel their economy from ruins to second largest global economy within about three and a half decades. And it gives us the Toyota Way, which is another name for the Toyota production system. It's basically an amalgamation of statistical process control and Deming's plan, do, check, act cycle. It's uh, all about just-in-time, continuous improvement. They focus on maximizing efficiency by eliminating waste across the entire process, and I mean the entire. They actually empower line workers to experiment with improvements or stop production if they observe any abnormalities. There's a significant focus on design, like looking for any areas of waste in the production or manufacturing process, with three areas identified. Mura, which is inconsistency, uh, Marie, which is overburden, and Muda, which is wasted effort or non-value adding work. So from there we go into the 80s and uh, lean manufacturing, which is an outgrowth of the Toyota way. It focuses on identifying what steps in a process add value versus those that do not add value. It's a very binary mentality. So they are focused in, in lean manufacturing on analyzing the seven areas where resources are most often wasted. Transportation, inventory, motion, waiting, overprocessing, overproduction, 
and defects. Now we add other wastes uh, over time such as the waste of human talent and producing goods that don't meet the customer's demand but this notion of waste is, is, is really you know integral to Agile and in fact in 1996 a guy named Kent Beck introduces extreme programming and this is considered by many to be the advent of lean software development. Customer satisfaction is Extreme Programming's primary goal. It states that basically you should only deliver the functionality that's needed to perform and no more. This is a core concept of Agile, something that we'll talk about as just enough. Um, it emphasizes self-organizing teams where customers are involved throughout the process, workers can add value throughout the chain, and managers act as communication and relationship stewards. And this takes us into the current millennia and the Agile Manifesto. Uh, in 2001. The Agile Manifesto organizes the concepts of extreme programming and Scrum as well as others like rational unified processing and features driven development around the notion that software development is an iterative incremental process where solutions evolve through the work of cross-functional self-organizing teams. The Agile Manifesto is all about its values. So Agile values individuals and interactions over processes and tools working software over comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, and finally responding to change over following a plan. You should read the Agile Manifesto yourself uh, and, and we'll also revisit it. But that's it. That's our brief history of Agile. Hopefully these concepts will help you as we move forward into the subsequent lectures.